And back to wherever we are, let us continue. Hey, Ignatz. Getting lost in your imagination again? No. Today I am praying. So, yes. <laughs> I'm hoping that if I pray with all my might, she will appear before me. The goddess, you mean. <laughs> oh, I I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, no, 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 won't go there. Yes. Perhaps it's strange to think about such things. Nah, you're fine. If I had the chance to meet the goddess, I certainly wouldn't say no. Especially your version of the goddess, huh? A total looker, isn't that right? That's a disrespectful way of putting it. I just believe that she's a divine beauty. She'd have to be, considering how she mesmerized the people of Fodlin when she walked among them. Too true. No doubt an incomparable beauty, that one. Funny to think that even now she must be somewhere, right? Well, I guess she's just floating on a cloud or whatnot. Yes, indeed. Watching over us from above. And they say that someday she will return to walk amongst us again. Well, don't mind me. You go ahead and get some good praying in. If the goddess appears, you let me know, okay? What? No! If she does appear, I want it to just be the goddess and me. It'll be way better if I'm there too. I'm saying this for your benefit, Ignatz. Why? Are you, are you trying to trick him? Imagine an incomparable beauty standing before you. Do you really think you'll be able to remain calm? Uh, well, that is to say... He's not wrong, but I'm pretty sure he's just trying to get him to be like, Yeah, if you do actually stumble upon something, involve me. I want to know. I'm curious. But if I'm there, I can smooth things over. Have a nice chat, invite her to tea, everything a goddess deserves. Oh, well, I suppose that makes sense. <laughs> of course it does. Now, get on with it. Pray like you've never prayed before. <laughs> And that's the end of their relationship? Okay, sure. Sure, 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 sure. Marianne, please accept my apologies for my behavior yesterday. I'm not sure what you mean. Asking you about your family like that was pretty insensitive of me. No matter how curious I am, that's no way to treat someone. I'm sorry. Oh, no. You weren't being insensitive. I just didn't want to talk about it. I don't spend much time talking about myself. Not to people, anyway. If not people, then with who? Unpeople? <gasps> Non-people? Well, yes. I'm much more comfortable talking to anyone who isn't a person. I was actually joking, but now I'm mystified. Who is it you like to talk to? Dorte the horse. Ooh, she's open about it. Ah, of course. Good old Dorte. And does he understand what you tell him? We understand each other. He tells me when he's sleepy, or when his stomach hurts, or if his nose itches. Sounds like a complainer, that Dorte. But let's table this fascinating discussion for just a moment. Now that we've gotten in some small talk, I'd like to know what you're hiding. You are hiding something, right? Your lineage, perhaps? Uh, no. Didn't she? I'm pretty sure her crest is marked as a mystery whenever it comes up. So, that's probably relevant. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. If it's all just idle gossip, that's fine too. But if it's something silly like, my ancestors were cursed, therefore I'm cursed, you should know that I won't accept that nonsense. Oh boy. That sort of thinking is stupid, and that's all there is to it. Perfect impression. 100% spot on. Say your ancestors were thieves. Does that make you a thief, even if you've never stolen a thing? Of course not. But people have burdens to bear from the moment they're born. My burdens are so big that I... I'm sorry, I can't discuss this anymore. People certainly are born with burdens. She's right about that. But Marianne, don't you know that you can choose not to carry them? Yeah, your life is what you make of it. If you don't want the life people put in front of you, then don't take that life. Go make one for your own, uh, go make your own life, basically. What are you writing there, Hilda? Uh, wait, let me guess. You're replying to one of your brother's letters, right? Of course. 
It's a pain, but I make sure to always send him a response, otherwise he'll worry. It's much easier than when we lived together. A few letters here and there are a small price to pay for this peaceful, brother-free environment. <laughs> well, that's a fine thing to do regardless of your reasons. As for me, it's been far too long since I've written to my parents. Oh, I thought your father had died. Not quite. He's still alive and kicking, as far as I know. The late Duke who died in an accident was my uncle. I see. I do recall you mentioning that your mother was born into the Regan family. What's your father like, if you don't mind me asking? He's quite the extravagant character. When I was a kid, he used to tie me to a horse and drag me around. Excuse me? <laughs> what now? In all fairness, I was quite a little brat. The horse thing sounds worse than it is. There's sort of a trick to it. A trick I hope I never need to learn. Your mother didn't step in and make him stop? Gods, no. She'd just laugh right along with him. If my father is extravagant, my mother's more like a warrior goddess or maybe a demon queen. People are indeed born with a burden. This one time, she got into an argument with my combat instructor and wound up in a full-on fist fight with the guy. What's more, she won. My instructor was a mighty warrior, undefeated in a hundred battles, but even he was no match for her. So the impression I get about Claude is that I think he's... His mother is a woman from the Regan household, and she went to, like, Elmira and got married to some guy. Probably someone in their equivalent to a noble structure. Or at least someone well off enough. Especially since what he's talking about having the instructor who's undefeated and whatnot. And basically, he just decided to come over here because he technically had a claim to it and I'm guessing he felt like it? Curiosity, maybe? Huh? But your mother is a lady of nobility. True, but she was the kind of woman to elope with the man she loved and throw it all away. Not your average duchess at all. Ooh, they eloped! I like that. It's so romantic. Imagine abandoning your family forever to be with the one you love. Not everyone can do that. So what's the part you like about it, Yoda? The abandoning your family forever or the being with the one you love? It's not a question of can. It's a question of will. Even someone like you who generally despises effort would pull out all the stops for something you really care about. Isn't that right? Excuse me? I put in plenty of effort. Hey, that was a compliment. Anyhow, I look forward to the day when something inspires you to try your absolute hardest. It will be something to behold. Interesting. Okay. Okay, okay. They seem to get each other at minimum. A little closer... Hey, Leone. What are you up to? Oh, come on! What'd you do that for? To what? Look, you ran my quarry off. Uh... You were hunting? Is the dining hall that short on food supplies? No, but I like to hunt every now and again. Keep my skills sharp. I suppose so. You're from a family of hunters, right? Well, there's no shortage of prey to hunt around here. True. Not many hunters around the monastery, huh? Rivers full of fish, trees bursting with fruit, mushrooms ready to harvest all over. It's the kind of place where you can really be self-sufficient. Guess we can thank the goddess for that. Eh, uh, I don't know. I'm more inclined to thank the bountiful earth and the goddess for such things. The goddess may offer spiritual guidance, but she doesn't fill our bellies, that's for sure. Not Ooh. a very noble-sounding thing, to disregard the goddess and honor the land. I mean, he's a notch more practical. Leone, whose grace do you suppose humans live by? The goddess? The nobility? I'd say it's neither. It's the endless bounty of this magnificent land that gives us life. Won't hear me deny it. But who's to say it isn't the goddess whose protection makes nature thrive? I'm not the most devout person, but I'm not about to go around saying we don't need the goddess at all. I said she gives spiritual support, didn't I? I wouldn't go so far as to say she's wholly unnecessary. But in Elmira, Dagda, Bridget, and plenty of other places, they don't believe in the goddess. Nature is a blessing that knows nothing of borders. The goddess is the goddess, and the earth is the earth. 
they should both be revered for what they are. Hmm. Fair enough. Look, this is just my personal opinion. If you truly believe that everything depends on the goddess of Seros, that's your... Hey, it's fine. You don't have to worry about me. I'm a believer, but I know there are those who aren't. And I kind of like your way of thinking. Giving thanks to nature and all. It makes sense. I knew a wild girl like you would be able to get behind an idea like that. <laughs> what? Like I'm feral or something? <laughs> hey, you know, this kind of talk could be viewed as heresy if it was public. Yeah, probably. We'll just have to keep it to ourselves. <laughs> oh, Claude, stop converting people. They're not gonna like that. They're not gonna like that. Uh. Picking wildflowers? Seems such a common activity for someone like you. To me, the most beautiful flower is the one that blossoms by its own strength. Lysithia, please accept this as- Oh, for fuck's- Knock it off! My goodness. Completely uncalled- uh, like, sorry. unprompted. It's just that the thorns are a bit sharp, and I'm not a fan of killing nature. True sympathy, even for the smallest wildflower. I admire your kindness. When you inherit your house, that kindness will be a balm to your subjects. They and the neighboring lords will trust you instinctively. Politics. Again. The Alliance has been harmed in the past by lords who thought only of themselves, who saw others as a means to an end. But you! You understand others' pain! With you around, I am quite hopeful that the Alliance will flourish again. That's not something you should get your hopes up about. House Ordelia will end with my father. I'm sorry? I understand you have a distaste for politics, but could you really allow a noble house three centuries old to fall to ruin? I mean, why not? It's like Claude said. You're born with your burdens, but you, it's up to you to choose to carry them. This goes beyond you and even your house. What would become of Fodlin if all its noble houses withered away in such a manner? The people would be in disarray. The balance of power would crumble. Chaos would rule. No, it's just... My body, unfortunately, is not built to last. And I have no siblings. When I die, that's the end. Hmm. L Lorenz. <laughs> Him just, like, sort of freaking out about it. I sh would you like me to introduce you to Edogarn? <laughs> what? What, it, what would he, how would he react if we actually recruited him or something like that? He seems like the farthest away. Because <laughs> he, he sees it as just, a, like, so Ferdinand seems to see society and whatnot, or sorry, nobility and whatnot, as simply a thing to aspire to. So remove the nobility system, it's still just something to aspire to. Lorenz sees it as an inherent part of how things work and should work, and chaos would reign without it. I wonder how he would have reacted. Noble birth has been nothing but a source of pain for me. For me, and for my parents. We got sucked into the rebellion in the Empire, and it led to... many responsibilities for us. The things we went through. I can hardly bear to speak of it. All I want now is to give my mother and father the chance to live out their years in peace. I intend to do whatever I can to ease the hardships of our people while I still have life left in me. Naturally, I worry about what will come to pass after I'm gone, but I'm sure things will work out so long as there are people like you around working so hard for a better future. So you have been thinking of the future, even despite all of that. I... I am so sorry, I had no idea. Lysithia, I have offended you most persistently. Please find it in your heart to forgive my impudence. Don't worry about it. If you're so insistent upon being my friend, I'm sure more tasty snacks and tea will help persuade me. But if speaking of the future holds such importance, better to find someone who actually has one. I understand. Yes, let's take tea together again soon. Yay, Lorenz got a little bit of a reality check. Woo! Fun times. Woo! Last one for him? Good. Honestly, my goodness. 
Like the best. <laughs> ah, there's yet another option. That's the thing. Like the best part of his supports. I still only remember one where he didn't sort of piss me off in some fashion. Where the best part of supports is when he sort of gets a reality check. Lawrence, what are you doing? Oh, hello, Hilda. I'm using these pieces to represent soldiers on the battlefield. This will allow me to better visualize concepts of strategy. Very good. Is it fun? Oh, it is utterly engrossing. Look, swap out just certain pieces for others, and the board completely changes. Then, even considering the same types of units, employing different individuals calls for a new set of plans. Oh, I see. Or, I kind of see. It's hard for me to grasp really complex things like this. Nonsense. It's thanks to your many requests that I've been adapting my fighting style of late. Working to accommodate you has convincingly shown me how essential it is to rethink tactics on a continual basis. After all, the risk of getting hurt is greatly reduced if you are prepared for any situation. So now I will be ready for anything. Okay. What about it? Lawrence, you're so wonderful, I'm at a loss for words. I'm not just saying that to flatter you either, honestly. Tell me something, Hilda. <laughs> Did you make all of these ludicrous requests of me purely so that I might have the opportunity to develop myself? I think she was just struck in awe about, how the f uh, about the fact that you managed to take something positive from all of it. Because if so, I am deeply moved. Thank you for caring so thoughtfully and passionately for my personal growth. Um, you're welcome. <laughs> Such a liar. If you will permit me to return the favor, I do have one request to make of you. Will you hear me out? Uh, I'm not usually one for fielding requests, but I can make an exception in your case, I suppose. I would be so pleased to have the opportunity to observe you in action, in the heat of battle. Would you be so kind as to oblige me? Oh, very well. You've convinced me. But... If it gets too intense, you'll help me out, right? <laughs> so basically, it's not gonna be that in- Okay. Got it. Got it, got it, got it. Good morning, Hilda. Is anything troubling you today? Nope, nothing. I don't remember in the slightest what the first one was about. If there was, I don't think I'd ask for your help. I'm Ooh. sorry to hear that. Have I done something to upset you? Their first one must have been significant, because that's like the least Hilda response I've seen to anything, like, any time recently. Not exactly. You go overboard helping me is all. You do way, way too much. So, I feel guilty, like I'm putting you out. Goodness, it was never my intention to have you worry about me. Hmm. Can I ask you something? Of course, what is it? What are you doing today? Following my morning prayers, I'll be cleaning the altar, then caring for the flowers in the greenhouse. Then it's off to the library to help organize and sort, then to the dining hall to wipe down the tables and chairs. The floors could use a good polish too. Oh, and the weather's so nice that I might air out the bedding. After that, it's... Wow, you're still not done? There's more? Well, the dishcloths in the dining hall are all frayed, so I was hoping to mend them. Sewing? Don't you think that's too much? Whatever do you mean? And why are you speaking so loudly all of a sudden? Ugh, I'll help with the dining hall, but I am not sewing. So that was your promise to help back because you felt so guilty about her helping just a bit too much. You want to help? That would be delightful. Everyone asks you for help, and you always say yes, don't you? I suppose. I believe it's important to help where you can. If you see someone in trouble, you can't leave them, can you? You're too kind, Mercedes. Literally. I can't empathize. I'm sure you can. You and I are very similar in that way. Are you serious? How? We have nothing in common. That may be so, but you thought I was in trouble, and you agreed to help, didn't you? Well, I mean, yes. Doesn't that just more mean she has limits? 
to what she's willing to. Whatever. That's exactly what I do. I'm so happy to have found a kindred spirit. Uh, if that's what makes you happy, okay. Kindred spirits. Let's go with that. Now that I've got you at my side, I can take on even more responsibilities. Uh-oh. Not a chance. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. That... <laughs> that went in... That... Wow, she... Hilda does not deal with her very well, does she? They can go to A, too. Hmm. I, I, I'm not sure exactly what the A's mean. For uh, You've been all an of them. enormous help. Thanks so much. Excuse me. I have some more supplies that just arrived for the infirmary. Oh, were there more? I thought I'd gotten them all. I just have bandages and other small things, but there might be more coming. Well, I just got the boys to bring in the heavy bottles. Looks like we can't fit all of it without some rearranging, though. You know, if you'd arrived earlier, you could have helped me tidy up. My apologies. I don't really need your apologies. I need your help. Oh, okay. How can I help? How can you help? I said tidy up, didn't I? See the shells there? See if you can clear out some space and tuck away the bandages. I can try. She didn't seem like she'd be incompetent. Hey, careful, Marianne. There's some strong stuff in those bottles. I'm sorry, I... No, look, just leave the bandages for now and move the bottles from the shelf. I can do that. Uh, now the bandages fell. Ah, uh, no! So in the end, I did it all by myself. I'm sorry that I was no help. I just got in your way. It's fine. We'll even it out with pastries. You want me to get you pastries? I guess I can. You seem so thoughtful and composed, but you're surprisingly clumsy. It's such an odd mix. I practically have no choice but to take over for you. You're right. I'm sorry. She's gonna take that as affirmation of her freaking insecurity. Is that the end? Oh, ah, damn. Well, I'm happy they have an A. That would be a horrible place to end it. Be a horrible place to end it. Oh, hey, it's you. Going for a walk again today? No, I'm on cooking duty today, and I have to head into town for some groceries. All on your own? Hmm, I'd better go with you. I'd be worried if you went by yourself. Ouch, ouch, ouch. So basically, their whole thing was that, um, Lysithia was, like, really angry at him for essentially being so hesitant on making the most of his life on and acting like that, basically. And he was like, sometimes it's nice to be treated like a child. Or it's no, not that bad please. of a thing. I can manage on my own. But won't you have a hard time carrying everything back? Not at all. I'll be fine. I'm just replacing a few ingredients. Also, I may not look it, but I'm actually quite strong. I've been exercising every day. You're right. You don't look it. Your biceps are a fraction of the size of Raphael's. If you start fumbling around under the weight of all the groceries, and then you trip and spill everything everywhere... Look, I'm just saying that could be your future. It could happen. It doesn't look pretty. That's what you think of me, huh? Yep. You're honestly a bit of a mess. I see. Ooh. If that's how you feel. Yeah, oh, ouch. knock it off with the wounded puppy dog eyes. As though I'm some sort of villain in your story. I'm sorry. That wasn't my intention. I'm just a bit sensitive, that's all. You're talking like you don't respect me. I see. So now it's my fault? I mean, she clearly doesn't respect you. No matter how grown you seem to think you are, there's so much you're incapable of. You can play at being a mature adult, but it only ever complicates things, and that's exactly what makes you look like a child. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, enough already! Would you just leave me alone? Wait, 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 wait. Lysithia, Lysithia, why are you the one saying that? 
It's like... It's like such a hypocritical... Oh, whatever. Maybe I... went a bit far that time. But he's so stubborn despite his ineptitude. I can't just leave it be. He's so foolish, constantly making a mess of things. Wait, but then... No matter how much we stretch, some things are always beyond us. I think it's fine to be vulnerable and ask for help sometimes. What he said to me before... To everyone else, do I seem just like Ignatz? Oh boy. What does that make Ignatz if he's the equivalent of you to, uh... Yeah, uh, to you. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, well, that's, uh, that's some supports for today. On to our mission of seeing if things deviate. Should be interesting. Should be interesting. You're going to receive the goddess's revelation at the holy tomb? That's news to me. I did not see that coming. Lady Rhea's going too, right? I hear it will be well guarded, but is that really okay? Did I not tell anyone before it started to happen? You know, I think Rhea might have said not to. Hmm. If Solon's allies are still around, it's certainly true that we don't know when or where they may appear. I don't know what type of place this holy tomb is, but we should be cautious. If something happens, we'll have to take matters into our own hands. What do you think, Professor? Is it really okay for Lady Rhea to attend? <laughs> I don't fucking care. It's encouraging, she might die. <laughs> Leave it to our fearless leader to shrewdly factor in Rhea's fighting ability. You're bold, Teach. I love it. Well, the truth is, we won't know what's going to happen until it happens. All we can do is stay on our guard and play it by ear. That's quite enough babbling, Claude. There is nobody more unfit for a holy ceremony than you. Um, uh. divine punishment won't strike us for sitting foot in the holy tomb, right? Well, I'm pretty sure I'm a male goddess, so... I'm, I'm just saying, I'm, I think it'll be fine. Pretty sure. Good grief. Why are you always so negative? Hmm? Flame? Is something on your mind? Who? Me? No. It is nothing. May we all see this through to the end. It still doesn't make sense to me. A goddess was living inside Teach, right? But now there's a ceremony to receive a revelation or whatever. How could that be necessary anymore? There must be another objective. <sighs> It's pointless to speculate about it now. We'll know the answer soon enough. It is big, one big whole contradiction, isn't it? There isn't any danger for us students, but be careful, Teach. I suppose you could maybe argue that maybe Sothis is just like maybe a part of the goddess? A fraction, perhaps? Are you surprised, Professor? This is the holy tomb. That mechanism for descending underground back there, what power is it? When I tried to come by myself, it wouldn't even budge. This is where the goddess who created this world was laid to rest, along with her children. It is said that our creator, the goddess Sothis, sat upon this very throne. Professor, do you recognize this throne? Mm. Nope, definitely not at all. Claude, though, you tried coming down here? You found the entrance. That means if Edelgard comes down here, that means she must have the ability to make it activate too, right? Which means the Crest Stones, probably? That power is probably what powers it. Yeah, I don't think I'm ever going to be on your side. There is no need to hide anything from me. You have seen it, haven't you? In a dream. Sit upon the throne. I have no doubt you will be gifted a revelation from the goddess. Hmm. Well? 
It was supposed to be but a step away. What could possibly be missing? Sorry to disturb you when you're distressed, Archbishop, but it seems some uninvited guests have arrived. Yeah. <laughs> Don't move, any of you. If you move, your lives will be forfeit. Thank you ever so much for guiding us this far. The Imperial Army will now take possession of everything in the Holy Tomb. <laughs> the Imperial Army? What are they doing here? So... They knew we were heading to the Holy Tomb and followed us here. Hey, who is that standing next to the angry guy? Could that be... The Flame Emperor. I see. So you've been allied with the Empire from the beginning. What are they doing here? What do they hope to gain? There's only one goal for grave robbers like these. Right, Flame Emperor? You're here to steal the treasure that rests within the Holy Tomb. For a fool, you catch on quickly. Those crest stones will be ours. That infernal power, which is masquerading as a medicine but is truly a poison, will plague this world no longer. Insolence! You will atone for the sin of trampling on this holy resting place. Professor, destroy these villainous traitors who dare dishonor our creator! I guess I don't have any reason to disobey you at this point. The Flame Emperor has only proved to be an enemy. You only proved to be super suspicious at this point. Woo. <laughs> uh, it seems like it's setting up basically the same battles, so... Yeah, I guess we'll see. Okay, let's go. I will not allow such violence from the Empire. Strike down the rebels and protect the Holy Tomb. Whatever you say, buddy. The crest stones are in the caskets. Open every the Holy Tomb. Okay, same thing as before, too. So I'll get right on that. <laughs> Still got room to grow. There's still a long way to go. I think that's better than her level up if I had let it go through during the last one. Technically. Take away the crests. That is enough. Okay. This is going quite well, especially since we're spending so much time on taking the crest stones. Yeah, and then there's that. And that. Not horrible. Can't get comfortable. Not horrible at all. So my general thought on how I'm going about it this time is I'm mostly letting the people below here do what they want, basically. And I'm going after these guys sooner or later, for all intents and purposes. So I can get the ones that are farther up and the other ones basically have to run into me or run around me. I'm getting better. Nope, yep, not horrible either. Still never sold the stuff from that uh, other one, but oh well. Yeah. Oh dear, maybe I was too lazy. Quite definitely a possibility.
I am still far from my best. Right side hype? It's less of a hype when it's like... When you basically know that, um... You can't have movement go up, but it's still not everything. Another step forward. You're making me look bad. Eh, at least he has... At least he has good defenses. I suppose that's one, uh, one thing to take out of it. Well, indeed, I guess. Oh, well, indeed. Yeah. Sorry. I not bad, not bad, not bad. Down. Admittedly, two of those aren't all that helpful with strength and charisma, but you know. <laughs> Never be satisfied. Mm. <laughs> Still got room to grow. There's worse, I suppose. Certainly worse. Can I get a do over? Whatever. That's all the One person I did not wish to make an enemy of. Oh, there's that. We must all do our part. A change for the better. So, the end has come. Is this some sick joke? The Flame Emperor is actually Edelgard? Um... I don't know what to tell you, man. Yay, I got a second one of those. That'll be useful. I don't think I need any more advanced seals. Oh my. Okay, how will this vary? Yep, much like um, Petra did when I did this the first time. Flying around and like knocking out the enemies is very useful. You have disappointed me. Edelgard, to think that a descendant of House Heresmelk would dare betray the Holy Church. Professor, kill Edelgard at once. Oh, please give me a choice here. My freaking goodness. She is a danger to all of Fodlin. Such a rebellious heart cannot be allowed to keep beating. The only thing I'm disappointed in Edelgard for is one, not getting better help in this situation. I guess she was just lucky I was on her side last time. And two, not trying harder to understand the motives of people like Claude here. I actually legitimately, uh, legitimately think Claude might be on her side. 
then again, based on the Crimson Flower stuff, I still sort of think that maybe they just have different visions. Eh. I have achieved my objective. I will retreat. Farewell, Professor. If we meet again, it will be on the battlefield. Come, Hubert. To flee <sighs> is futile, wicked girl. The Church of Seros will raise its entire army against you until you have been captured and punished. You have defiled the holy tomb, dishonored the goddess, and humiliated your brethren. That crime will never be erased. Even if you burn in the eternal flames and spill all of your blood into the goddess's soil. Come, Professor. Let us return and decide upon our next course of action. Can it have nothing to do with you? My goodness. I'm not exactly on friendly terms with the princess, but I do have a few questions for her. Edelgard said that the crest stones represent power. That means she knows how to use them. She almost certainly knows other secrets of Fodlin as well. Once things calm down a bit, there's a lot more that Rhea needs to tell us. <laughs> to say the least. I just hope there's still time. I have this strange feeling that history is being written. That an age of anarchy is upon us. Let's hope I'm mistaken. Well, trust your gut. Okay! Yeah, I didn't have a choice or anything, so... The leaders of the church have misused its creed to fulfill their true desire. To rule the world. They have fooled the people of Fodlin. Long ago, they divided the empire to create a kingdom. And then, divided that kingdom to create an alliance. They did all of this to make the masses bicker amongst themselves. They caused instability in order to reinforce their own authority. They gathered gold and lived in extravagance. How? By preying on the devotion of those who wished for the goddess's salvation. Those corrupt hypocrites cannot lead Fodlin to true peace. Their foul belief system must be torn asunder so that true wisdom may finally prevail. And so, I have decided. By order of the Adrestian Emperor, Edelgard von Hresfeld, the Empire hereby declares war on the Church of Seros. I cannot believe it. Can I, can I, uh... Can I just, like, get my students out of here and be, like, you know, a third faction that observes? Let us recount the situation as it stands, Professor. After you returned from the Holy Tomb, the Adrestian Empire declared war upon the Church of Seros, as well as our allies. It felt like that speech was different. It's been a while since I've seen it in the original one that I did. But it felt different. Declared war. Edelgard demanded her own father relinquish the throne, and then assumed the position of Emperor. It seemed pretty... It seemed pretty mutual when I did that, but okay. She has deemed the Church of Seros to be an evil of this world, and is calling upon the people of Fodlin to help her tear it down. I must discuss our response to this declaration with the Archbishop, after the Knights return from their investigation. Until then, watch over the students. See that they remain calm. Hmm. I heard what happened, Teach. The princess, well, the emperor now. She really did it, didn't she? Yep. Taking action instead of just speaking of it. The lords and dukes of both the kingdom and the alliance have been called out, and now have to choose between the church and the empire. The seed of conflict was always there. And now, we find ourselves in the middle of a war that will tear Fodlin in two. The Empire is rash, but I never thought it would come to this. How could something like this happen? I hope everyone back home is safe. I'm sure it's mass confusion at home right now. My brother must be worried sick about me. Well, let's just calm down and think about it. People aren't irrational. They want something. She does it for a reason. Just like Rhea does her bullshit for a reason, I'm sure. 
Even if the reason that I sort of think seems to be very selfish. But let's let's try to let's try to gain <laughs> I'm saying this knowing her intentions, but you know. You're absolutely right, Teach. I'm sure a lot of us are worried about our homes, but all we can do for now is prepare for battle and tread carefully. <sighs> I guess they're going to give us little choice but to get conscripted into the defense of this place. Hmm. Part one. White clouds. Lone moon. To war. Okay. Together, the people of Fodlin relish the beauty of the brilliant moon overhead as another year ends. They recall sad partings and new acquaintances alike. But each person must still walk their chosen path alone. With each day, the presence of spring grows stronger, and yet a lone moon still haunts the sky. A silent reminder, perhaps, of some inescapable truth. Well, that was sort of... <laughs> that was foreboding. Oh, my. Okay, all new content from here on out, I think. I... I probably. I guess we'll see how much they reuse, but you know. Probably maps, mainly. Hard to imagine them justifying a lot of those battles playing out. And... Oh, wow, we jumped ahead a bunch. One instructions. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Unforgivable! I cannot fathom that the Adrestian Empire would embark on such a violent course of action. Come, come on, the fault is my own. I failed to see the wickedness within Edelgard's heart. <sighs> please give me a chance to tell her off, please don't. Please give me a chance to tell her fucking off. Is she actually wicked? Come on! She plotted with ill-meaning strangers to achieve her own ambitions and defiled the Holy Tomb. Honestly, who the fuck cares about that second barn? She obviously plotted stuff because she felt she couldn't do it otherwise. If that is not wicked, what is? Ah, don't even get me started. Or perhaps her ambitions are even grander than we know. Perhaps she is planning to make herself a false deity by demonizing the Church of Seros. Adrestia received its very name through a divine oracle. To injure the goddess is a sin most foul that shall not be forgiven, nor forgotten. <laughs> I just want to point out the fucking irony. Whatever. We must stop the Empire. And quickly. I have returned, Rhea. Welcome back, Shamir. Were you able to discern the Empire's movements? Their main troops are marching towards Garrick Mach. It is said that they will join forces with Edelgard's army and arrive within two weeks. The order you do these routes really, really, really do. I say it. Buys the ones that you do after that. My goodness. Two weeks. That is not enough time. It will require all of our efforts just to prepare our defenses before then. We must send notice to all surrounding villages at once. We must order the residents of Garrig Mach to flee for their lives. It will be done. Professor, listen closely. If our enemy invades the monastery, I will have no choice but to stand upon the battlefield. If something happens to me, I am entrusting my sacred duties to you. Which will- which I will abandon immediately. You don't know me, do you? You don't know me at all, do you? Sacred duties? What are you talking about? You must have guessed it by now. The truth of who you are. Hmm. I get the idea, but you should be more fucking... Just... Uh, 
up front. If you want me to really be on your side, fucking explain shit! Or perhaps I should say... Your lost memories are surely beginning to return. Oh. Is that what you're hoping for? I still am completely convinced that she wanted to just fucking replace me with so this. And this is only reinforcing that. She's just hoping it's happening at a slower rate than she expected. I have acted all these long years as a mere proxy for you. But the duty is yours. And yours alone. Only you can lead the people of Fodlan. You think you would have been more accepting of me being like, nah, you're, you're doing the wrong shit if she, you really honestly believe that in the other round? But no, just because I betrayed you means that it couldn't be the same way. Rhea, please. You must tell me all that you know. I beg of you. <sighs> That one is the progenitor god. Am I correct? In a sense. Our dear professor is a vessel. One who carries the power of the progenitor god within. In time, the vessel will become one with the power contained within, and the progenitor god shall return to this world. I see. I trust that you are aware of the questionable nature of this experiment. But I suppose there is no turning back. I ask that you help our friend. And in doing so, help her. I am waiting and hoping for the moment when our creator rules this wayward land once more. I understand. As ever, I will take you at your word. Lady Rhea! Brother, I will do my part as well. Flame! Were you eavesdropping? <sighs> Regardless, I am glad to hear it. You owe your life to the Professor, after all. And in the end, they may prove to be our brethren. You have my gratitude, Sedith. And you as well, Flane. As followers of the Progenitor God, it is up to us to see our mission through. <sighs> I want to be everything you don't expect me to be. I'm so fucking mad. Oh, happy birthday, I suppose. You have my gratitude. Ah, uh, okay. So, I, okay, we're here. I guess that makes sense. I guess that makes sense, all things considered. Yep. Yeah. Explore. I wonder how long this will stick around. Seeking intel in the Imperial Army. Okay, there is a new one at the very least. Interesting. All the black eagles are still here. Interesting. To think that the Flame Emperor was Edelgard all along. Flame's abduction? Geralt's murder? The turmoil in Remire Village? Whether or not she was the mastermind behind what happened, it at least seems like she was involved. And yet she was able to remain so composed while she was enrolled at the Officer's Academy. I won't disagree with the premise. I definitely won't disagree with it. Mm. What does war with Edelgard mean for us, Professor? And why does she even want that? She, that's not wrong. She seems to think that force is the only way. Which may or may not be true. Considering no one seems on any side of any of the aisles seems to want to just sit down and talk it out I wonder why she'd think that That's how it always goes, I guess you never realize something can't be undone until you've done it Yeah, sometimes something and sometimes things can never get started until you've done something you can't undo That's sort of the thing There's the question of if you can actually uh, enact change like she wants to without doing that, but... Man, I, I... Just from her perspective, it probably seems absolutely like there's no other option. Considering how, uh... Limited she is. 
even within her own country. Pardon me. Greetings, Professor. Something to report. Unexpected, isn't it? Apparently, this is the first time Garrig Mach has been invaded in its whole 995 year history. It's my job to protect this gate, so even if enemies come in droves, I will never let them through. I hope we both survive. Let's battle with all our might and pray we win this thing. Eh. Be fine. Well, I'll be. I can't believe the Empire raised an army. Even I couldn't have guessed it. Wait, what? War is profitable, but dangerous. I really don't like seeing people I care about out there mixed up in all this. I mean, do you think the Empire did not have, like, an army, like a standing army before all this happened? Hmm. Okay, sure. Oh, did Seth? Did Seth join my ranks? Wait, why are you in my... What, fu what fucking ever. Whatever. Is that temporary or something? Whatever. I'm good, I'm good. Hey, he's just arbitrarily there now. Okay. Professor. You know, Professor? I'm glad that I came to the Officer's Academy. I feel accepted here. I've learned so much. Honestly, I'm surprised at how much I've grown. So, I will not let the Academy be destroyed. It's important to me, and I will protect it. Don't do anything rash. Your guys' safety is more important to me than anything here. Come on. I'll try to keep a clear head, but there won't be any turning back for me. I don't want to have regrets. We're going to win this, Professor. Well, at least you're more decisive in your decision-making than you used to be. Oh, no. Half of the Empire's six great noble families have declared their support for Edelgard. Of the other three, Lord Vestra was assassinated. Hubert, his son, will succeed him. Bernadetta's father, Count Varley, is under house arrest. His wife is now supporting Edelgard. And my father, he was stripped of his role as Prime Minister. As a result, House Iyer has lost all of its power, all of its lands. We have lost everything. I... I... What do I do? You're sort of put over a barrel and smacked your bottom a bunch, aren't ya? Recruit? Nah, I'm good. Interesting, though. Hmm. Maybe he'll go join her. So, the three that didn't... Bernie's dad, who sort of sucks ass. Hubert's dad, who we don't really know, but... I don't know, from my vague impressions, I sort of get the impression he sucks ass. And Ferdinand's dad, who sucks ass. So it's basically all the assholes, basically, that didn't, you know, support her. What? There are always small power struggles, still. It has been hundreds of years since all of Fogland was consumed by war. I didn't actually think it would come to this. I feel as though I'm not in my rightful place. I cannot protect the things I should. Professor, if I survive this war, I wish to return to my homeland, to the land of my king. Well, we'll see if it's still around at the end of it. I guess I'm interested to see if, how the direction this goes, I'm guessing that what it's going to be is that Edelgard's route has Edelgard's solution, Claude's route has Claude's solution, and Dimitri's route I don't know, he doesn't actually feel like he has solutions to anything, uh, from what little I've seen of him. But his solution, whatever that may be. Hey. We're falling behind. I don't know that we can keep up with the new Emperor. To think that she was able to raise an army of that size right under our noses. However hard we fight, I give us a 50% chance of winning. The enemy has too many advantages. We must make careful preparations. Still don't get why you're so loyal. You seem like one of the people that would back out when uh, things really hit the fan. Hmm. A moment. Uh, it's my job to protect Lady Rhea. I've got to do it, and I got to do it as best I can. And if that means I got to die for her, then I will. Uh, how could Edelgard treat Lady Rhea like she's the bad guy? 
She's never been anything but nice to everybody. I just don't get it at all. Well, I have some corrections to make for you. Shall I... turn you towards the executions that happened not that long ago? Ray's sorta of fucking merciless. Ray is sorta of fucking merciless, I'm just gonna note that. Those who serve the church must cast a but is it right to wield piety as a weapon? I have never kept the church. I, I Hey buddy. Nice. The Empire is moving quickly. Edelgard must have been preparing for this for a while now. If you really think about it, she must have been planning for this even before you got the Sword of the Creator. Of course she was always a step ahead of us. We were blinded by the ball and the Battle of the Eagle and Lion and everything else. I refuse to go down like this, though. So let's do something about it. What do you say? It's you and me, Teach. We've got this. We certainly have got something. I'm interested to see how it'll turn out. I assume we're probably going to have the same five-year jump. Considering they had, um older art for everyone, so... What is Edelgard even trying to achieve? She wants to destroy the church so badly that she'll take on anyone who doesn't fall in line? I don't get it. Her ideas are definitely in conflict with yours. I just can't believe she'd start a war over it. Not to mention using such nasty tactics to get her way. Could Captain Gerald's death have also been a part of her plan? Mm. Don't you go and die on me, Professor. Captain Gerald would never forgive you. I'm generally under the impression that her cooperation with the Pale Faces has more to do with one, keeping them on her side, and two, simply uh, augmenting the power of her army to a point that she feels she could win and actually like achieve what she wants to. Because if you think about it, ultimately, if you're starting a war over it, it's sort of probably... It feels like if you're going to start a war over it, you might as well do everything you can to make sure you win. Don't take, like, smaller measures just because, you know, you're conflicted about it. The Empire's aggression cannot stand. But if we are going to attack them now, we must be honest with ourselves about our chances of success. It goes without saying that I will fight the Imperial Army with everything I have for as long as I am able. But House Gloucester's territory is adjacent to Imperial lands. Let us proceed with caution. What, what are you saying? That you're willing to, like, jump boat and work with the Empire if it means, you know, upholding your status? That's sort of what it sounds like. Dear. Hmm. Huh? Professor, what actually happened last month? I can't keep up at Good all. Good question! Edelgard is the Emperor? And she's declared war against the Church? So now we're at war? What is going on? I really don't understand any of this. What should I do? You should go home and wait it out. Looking at you being in the Black Eagles class, I think a lot of you should probably do that. Edelgard became Emperor and raised an army, huh? Who knew the kid had it in her? I mean, yeah, of course, I knew she'd be Emperor eventually, but the more I think about it, the more surprised I am. I wonder who's gonna win. Well, us or her, you mean. But would it really be okay for Edelgard to win? Depends. Seems to be the uh, story here of not having the full story. Hard to judge what would be best for everyone when you don't. Things must be pretty crazy in Fargus about now. My father must be beside himself. I don't get it. Why did Edelgard make enemies with the nobles? For the sake of her ideals. Ideals she believed in so much, she was willing to start a war over them? Those must be some lofty ideals, to say the least. True enough. I've yet to see a convincing argument in this for war not being really necessary to achieve what she wants to achieve. So I guess we'll see if that comes. You could say that she could have just sat down and talked things over with people, but everything I've seen 
makes it seem like everyone has their own desire. I mean, just look at Rhea. Her desire is for fucking Sothis to come back and basically rule over everyone. Which is sort of, you know, fucked up in my mind in the first place. Um, and then you also have um, Dimitri and Claude and Edelgard, and they all seem like, well, you could sit down and talk, but it feels like those discussions wouldn't really go many places, basically. And at best, you're basically showing your hand and ruining your chances to do something by force. That's the thing. Once the Imperial Army reaches the monastery, we'll have no choice but to fight. What's going to happen to us? Everything will be alright. I'll do what I can to protect you guys, at the very least. I believe you. With the knights on our side, and especially with you, Professor, I know we can do this. <sighs> Should be interesting. Professor! Professor, I guess it's easy for me to say this now. I'm so glad I'm from the Alliance. I had no idea Edelgard was so scary. And Dimitri seems totally different than before. I wouldn't bend a knee to either of them. <laughs> what about Claude? I don't think necessarily I'd bend a knee to Edelgard. But I could definitely get behind her intent. Dimitri... Obviously, I haven't gotten the greatest view of him and his intents and all that sort of stuff. But the impression I did get is that he's the sort of person to have anger issues. And that's some of my biggest impressions of him. That he does that and then he sort of uses his, uh, uses excuses in order to lash out with those anger issues. If you remember, he was basically called a Tempest. Saw a storm through the battlefield destroying everything along its way. All while talking about how little he wanted people to die. So, yeah. How do you feel about Kalon? Well, I definitely don't hate him. <laughs> he rarely takes things seriously. But somehow, I just know we can always rely on him. Well, if we're forced to protect this place, our future is going to be dark no matter what. Yeah. I'm not against abandoning ship. I'm really not. Really, really not. His Highness calls for the head of Edelgard. For me, that is cause enough to fight. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. Why would Dimitri say that? His Highness would not say. But I can think of only one explanation. She must have been involved in the tragedy of Dusker. Except she wasn't? Didn't that happen when, like, you guys were kids? Which would have made her a kid at the time. Uh, you know, I do vaguely remember Dimitri acting like she was involved in Crimson Flower. <laughs> that sounds irrational. I am owing big debts to Duke Garrett of the Empire. He is the Minister of Affairs that are foreign. He is a friend of Edelgard. He is to her side. What should I be doing? You should do whatever you feel is best for yourself. But I request that you keep yourself safe, more than anything. Ugh. If I could go back to last month and throttle my carefree self. Now it turns out Edelgard is the Flame Emperor and the new Adrestian Emperor. And she's striking out against the monastery with the full force of the Imperial Army behind her. We gotta beat her at her own game. For our sake, as well as Lady Rhea's. Well. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I thought we'd all be really busy with assignments and getting ready for graduation. But now... Now that things have turned out like this... I guess there's nothing to do but fight. Just consider it your graduation exam. <laughs> I don't normally have a problem jumping into a fight, but it feels strange going up against my father. We aren't especially close, but he's not an opponent I'd want to face. I'd almost rather fight a monster. Which you have! I hope he's not part of the group coming to attack Garrett Mach. Yeah, I can imagine. He was trusted with a lot of responsibility in Crimson Flower, so... 
I suspect he's really competent. What? That girl's starting an all-out war, isn't she? But an enemy is an enemy, no matter who they are. Don't let compassion for her get in your way. Sure, bud. Okay. Huh. Okay. okay. He's not trying to think about the reasoning behind it. That's my impression, at least. I hear the Alliance's territory will be in danger if we don't get rid of these Empire guys. If the Alliance is in danger, that means my sister's in danger, too. There's no way I'm gonna allow that. It doesn't matter how many guys they throw at us. I'll beat them all. These muscles aren't just for show. But first, I gotta get some food. <laughs> Fun. Sure, buddy. Yeah, you're probably not... Uh, ...hyped to be on this side of it. Or either side of it. The most important nobles in the Empire are known for taking power from the previous Emperor. My father included. I didn't think it possible that the Imperial Princess could ascend the throne so easily. However, it seems that both my father and Kaspars are supporting Edelgard. Having both the Minister of Domestic Affairs and Minister of Military Affairs on your side gives you total control over the Empire's military and finances. You must have been making preparations for quite some time without anyone noticing. <sighs> yeah, quite some time. Right. <laughs> oh, you look angry. I'll have that girl's head. Just you wait. Have fun with that. Have fun with that. Yes. I guess we have no choice but to fight, have we? Oh, but why would Edelgard do something like this? I'm sure we'll be all right, though, Professor. The goddess will keep us safe. Yeah. The people with just, like, the really strong belief in the goddess. Can we really defeat someone who is willing to turn their back on the world? Just to uphold their own beliefs? I've spent my whole life running in fear. And now, I... We certainly cannot win if you run. You're right. It's time to stop running. I'll fight with everything I've got. I'm not telling you you have to be on my side. Or anyone's side, but, you know, fight for what you believe in. Whatever that may be. There's no chance at the hey. world you desire if you're not willing to put your foot forward and actually work for it. Professor. War is breaking out again. Is it not? Again, eh? There was a truly terrible war once upon a time. I never wanted another war. All we can do is steal ourselves for the fight ahead. Well, I think it was just a matter of time before something like this happened anyway, so... Yeah. 